Hello and welcome to Literally. I'm Anthony Rosenberg and today we are looking at symbols. Now I was going to do just one post but um, things got a little long so I had to cut it into two. That'll do, right? Uh, if you're interested in symbols this is where you want to be. So today we'll be looking specifically at at and the number sign or the pound sign or the hash sign or hashtag as it's now known. Um, that's all I could fit in. Believe me, there's a lot to look at. Without further ado, let's go. At. Known as the at symbol, uh, but previously known as commercial at. So some people would be speaking sometimes and they'd say, oh, so that's seven at $14. And like, what? Seven commercial at $14. So you could use commercial at as a way to explain the at that you were saying. Now, commercial at was used um, uh, around the world, everywhere, uh, in, in, especially in the commercial uh, sector of, of selling goods, commodities, things like that. In French, they use arabazi. I don't know how to say that in French. I'm sorry. Um, arroba in Spanish and ahoba in Portuguese and alpha sand in East Asia. That's an interesting one because in our second symbols post, we talk about the ampersand. So I wonder if there's a connection there. Uh, as I said, it was the commercial world that used this symbol um, more before um, modern day uh, usage. And it was used in accounting, especially in invoices. And some of the old invoices actually came with the at symbol printed on it. Uh, and it meant at a rate of, basically, um, uh, we would probably use nowadays a little X like times, yeah? So here's a simple example, seven cases of oranges or something like that at $5 each. So at commercial at $5, $35 total. So as I said, in some of the invoices, you would see the at symbol actually printed on the form. So you didn't need to actually write it in. More modern day usage has it in emails. So you'll see that most of us have one of those. And for those of us who are, who are a bit more active on the social media, I don't have one of these. I probably should get one. Maybe I can be as famous, famous as Beyonce. So um, Beyonce at Beyonce is a typical uh, famous person who is using um, the at symbol in the more commercial social media um, way. The quirky names around the world for at are fantastic, most related to animals. I don't speak any of these languages. So let's have a look at some funny ones. The first one is Dutch. Um, I'm not even going to try to say it, but they use um, the word monkey's tail for at. So you can see the curve in the monkey's tail there. The Danish use the elephant's trunk and there's the curve in the elephant's trunk. The Finnish people from Finland use the cat's tail and there you can see the curve in the cat's tail. German, they use Klammeraff. I don't know how to say that. And it's from the hanging monkey. So they don't make a reference to the tail per se, but just to the fact that if a, a man monkey is hanging, it's probably curling its tail to do so. The Greek use little duck, which I thought was rather cute. This was off a Greek um, site for, I think it's for ferry boats in the Greek islands. In Hungarian, they use worm. So there's a curly worm for you. In Korean, they use snail. Now there's the curvy curl in the uh, shell of the snail, which is strange because in English, when we use the word snail and we talk about male, um, we refer to snail mail as regular mail, the regular post, which is quite different to email, which is very fast. In Norwegian, they use pig's tail. So there's your curly pig's tail. And um, the Russians use sobachka, which I thought is a really nice name, and it refers to little dog. However, I couldn't find a particular dog with a curly tail. I know there are dogs out there with curly tails, but um, it doesn't make much reference to the curl per se. Um, so there you go. Russians have their way about it. Most, it's, isn't it interesting that most of these languages use a reference to some sort of animal? I thought that was um, uh, coincidental, if not just curious. 
let's have a look at the origin of at. Now, Monk's printing presses in the past had the word at. Um, I'm guessing this was probably in another language, but they had something like this. And rumor has it that there was a transformation over time where the T was incorporated into the A because they wanted to use fewer symbols. Because when in the old uh, printing presses, they had to actually put in each letter into the into the, the press. So it was very time consuming. So by, by creating symbols and things like that, it made, um, it made printing faster because they only need to put in one rather than two. So I wondered if they would do that with words like um, inconstitutional, you know, why not try and find one little symbol for that? Probably very difficult to do. Another reference is to the old vessels that were used when selling wine or probably water, but probably more wine back in, um, uh, I, I believe it was in the Roman times. And the vessel, or if you want to call it a vase, was called an amphora. Uh, and that was a measurement. So you would say, oh, give me five amphoras of wine for my party tonight. Um, so that was uh, that was a, an abbreviation for amphora, meaning vessel to carry wine. So you can see the commercial reference there um, where it sort of began. Uh, there's also a reference to some old Bulgarian uh, prayer sheets. So on these uh, these documents that they discovered back uh, from 1142 to 1153, it's not really sure exactly the date, but around about that time, um, they noted the use of the symbol at, and it was used in the word Amen at the end of the prayer. And so you can see on the document here, the symbol at the end of the prayer there. So this might be one of the first registered uses that was not commercial. Um, as I said, might be. There are some uh, different stories about where at comes from. These are some of the possible origins of the word. So we've got the, the Romans use, commercial use for selling wine. We've got the monks using the printing presses and we've got the Bulgarians using it for amen in their prayers. On to our symbol with a million names. So I've used at the top there, um, hash, pound, and number, which are the poor, probably the more modern uses of the word uh, for, uh, for this symbol. Um, but you can see there's been a lot of um, different, different names. Um, one that uh, was an attempt by the scientific world to get their own word for the symbol, and that was Octothorpe. Now there was a, a push for it. I just don't think it took off because Octothorpe doesn't roll off the tongue as easily as number, hash, and pound. Um, but an interesting uh, attempt for sure. Some of these I'd never heard of, like thud and thump, but certainly tic-tac-toe is used in, in at least in Brazil, in Portuguese, um, for the pound symbol. So it's called Jogo da Velha, the old person's game. I think it's probably the old lady's game, actually, in Jogo da Velha, yeah, probably old lady's game. Um, but the word hash is our new, new modern one, hash or hashtag. And that probably is a mutation or an evolution, if you prefer, from the word crosshatch. Crosshatch became hashtag. Uh, God knows how. Uh, but I have a theory, and it's not my theory. The theory is that, um, actually, yeah, it, it, this is one of the theories. Actually, I've got two theories, let's be honest. So the first one is that um, Libra uh, was the the term used when weighing up commercial um, value uh, of products, things like grain or um, vegetables or produce, things like this. They would use a scale, weigh it up, and they used the term Libra Pondo. Libra referring to the scales and Pondu, uh, uh, I believe it might have been a reference to um, some sort of money, monetary value. We'll see shortly how that transpired. So this was the symbol that was used, um, LB, and they put a, a, a cross uh, over the top of the LB, probably in a reference to the scale, right? So the idea of the, the scale like that. Now Libra uh, Libra Pondu was basically used like this. Libra was abbreviated to LB. Yeah, so there's our LB. And Pondu was strangely translated to pound. And even today in England, um, the uh, pound is the reference to the money that's used in uh, 
uh, England or even I think the whole UK, right? They'd say the, the British pound or the Scottish pound or the Irish pound. If I, if I'm on oh, no, actually Irish, I think has gone to Euro now. So no longer the Irish pound. Um, so the word pound, often you'll hear the word sterling pound or sorry it's pound sterling right pound sterling is the term for the, the the money used in the uk so you can see where these things sort of come from and you see lb with the cross at the top sort of looks a lot like the hashtag of today it was also used um not so much these days but it was also used in the commercial world to refer to telephone numbers. So here's the, t the classic uh, American um, Hollywood reference, 555. So that would be uh, on a business uh, letter or on a, um, uh, maybe a, in an email, you might see the hashtag, uh, the hashtag or the number symbol as it's probably referred to in that case. Uh, before the phone number. Nowadays, because of um, the internet, we can actually put in the picture of a phone. Some people prefer the, the abbreviation PH or the word phone, um, but the uh, hashtag or the number symbol was used uh, quite a lot. Probably not so much these days. Lastly, let's have a look at the modern world. So where is um, this used in the modern world and how did it come about? So in 2007, Chris Messina, who was one of these techies in San Francisco in the Silicon Valley world, and he proposed when Twitter was really starting to take off, he proposed that they use the pound symbol for uh, groups to direction posts to specific people. And you'll notice in his post in August 2007 that he used the word pound because hashtag really hadn't taken off. Um, so he proposed this and some of the other techies in the, in the, in the Silicon Valley were like, yeah, this is a good idea. And one guy referred to it as hash, um, but it still didn't take off straight away. It took a couple of months before, um, this guy, Nate Ritter, also one of these techie guys from Silicon Valley, he was down in the San Diego area, or at least talking about the San Diego area. And there were a lot of bushfires back in October, 2007 in that region, as there seems to be um, almost every year these, these days, right? So um, he was uh, posting on Twitter and he was using this uh, hashtag, hashtag San Diego fire, but he posted a lot. He just went overboard and posted so many that it kind of took off. That was really the moment that it it, it really took off as a, a, a the way to use it in Twitter, and that was where um, hashtag really found its footing in the modern um, uh, internet and social media world. All right, that's all from me. It's been literally a great time. I'll see you next time.